All right, here we are in a beautiful Alpine California day looking at a very nice and actually very elegant 1953 Buick Super Convertible. These cars, fifth model 56C would be the model. These cars are fairly rare, um, and this is a very nice car. 6,701 of these are actually produced. Um, this is a documented two-owner car uh, with a verified 67,000 actual miles. Now the car has been restored. Uh, the second owner owned, has owned this car since about 2006. And the reason the gentleman purchased the car is because he wanted to uh, relive yesterday when he had come to California way back in the day. He drove back actually in a car just like this. So he was trying to duplicate his uh, childhood days. They purchased the car from the original owner or younger days, put it that way. The original owner and uh, in 2006 and then begin a restoration that took six years. Um, all the trim on the car has been completely redone except for the exception of the rear bumperette. Uh, we're going to walk down here and kind of share a few things with you. It has a black canvas top. If you hang on to the video, we're going to cover more for you as we uh, uh, go out throughout the segments of the video where we actually power down the top. So it has a power top. All the chrome trim and bright work has been completely redone on it. You can always tell a super when you look at a one of these versus a, uh, a special or the lower mo line models. It'll have this rear fender spear here. He's added some fender skirts that are reproduction fender skirts. Other than that, all body panels on this car and trim are all factory trim. Um, just a lot of tedious time was done. Everything that was done, he did a lot of the hand assembly on this car and all nut and bolt stuff, but it has received a body off restoration where everything's been gone through. The original color of the car was a Tyler blue, but the car that he wanted was to duplicate the car he had back in the day, which was Osaga cream, which is what this color is. So it's a duplicate factory color that was refinished in. Again, all either the stainless has been polished or plated what could be chrome plated or need to be chrome plated was re-chrome plated and show quality chrome the grill is just spectacular in this car he uh, opted for some optional or aftermarket chrome full spoke wheels with a Skylark emblem in the center 53 1953 was the first year that they put an overhead valve V8 in one of these cars and uh, it has a uh, three, uh, 322 cubic inch overhead valve V8 with a optional Dynaflow automatic transmission in it, which is really neat. Most of them standard were a, a three-speed on the tree, I believe. But this grill, a lot of these grills were stolen over the years and used for street rods. The teeth on this baby are just gorgeous. When you look at this, uh, the bright work on this car is really special. I took a lot of photos, still photos of this, uh, and I'll share them with you at Spud's Spud's Garage and the photo set on this car. Um, you'll see the uh, super emblem on the front of the bumper here, but the bright work and the stainless and uh, all the Buick markings on this car are just spectacular. Mascot on the hood here. The finish is a high quality professional paint job. Took about almost a year to refinish it and discussing it. Uh, getting the history that I could as I was talking to the owner. Just beautiful. I see a lot of different cars. I do a lot of street rods and I do also a lot of stock cars and this is a very nice car. I've studied it all over and looked at it, took a lot of photos of it like we always do. And again, don't forget to go to spudsgarage.com. Um, the only spot I could find anything as I was picking it apart was a little part here where it had been touched up. Uh, I'll get it here. There it is. I'm sorry about that. Right at the hood edge here. Maybe when they were stalling it and they just uh, did a little touch up there whistle straight body we had it up on a lift here at the house the floor pans are absolutely rock solid original floor pans inner outer rockers restored uh, interior which would have been a correct combination for osaga green interior i mean osaga cream interior i said green i don't know where i got that from as you know my videos are all candid all factory door panels here it's a well option card has a I might have been standard with it, I don't know, but it has power windows and a power seat. It also has an AM radio in it that is functional. All the factory dashes here. It also has factory power steering. It has a nice trimmed out carpet here. Factory wool style. It has a body by Fisher seat in it. All the door trim. Door jam to door jam, you'll see all the latches have been CAD plated. The hardware is either CAD plated or been replaced with a, a factory uh, 
reproduction kit wise. A little warm out here and take some juice out of me today. I'll just have to keep adding it. But you'll see all the hardware's in the door jam here. We're going to show you this seat too. Like I mentioned, it was a power seat, but I never knew these cars did this till I started doing it, driver's side and passenger side, but we'll share it with you. When you lift the seat forward, it actually tips the whole seat at the same time. See how it goes forward there? Anyway, very nicely done reproduction factory style interior, full leather interior, uh, French style stitching is what I would call that. Power windows are all the way down, all the windows are functional. Pure pretty car. Big door, shuts great. A lot of metal on this girl. It has a uh, soft tonneau cover on it, but this also matches the power top. And again, as we mentioned, I'm going to be putting the uh, uh, top up and down. There'll be a section where you'll be able to see the top in the video. But we do, thought we'd do the walk around with the uh, top down so you kind of get a feel feel for the car. Because I'm often asked, can you put the top down? Power top. Let's step back here and let you take a look. Beautiful day here. It's a little bit warm here in Southern California. Dig it when the breeze comes up. All the chrome, like I said, in bright work is just spectacular. Um, again, Supers had this fender spear on the back. These tail lights are cool. Uh, the only piece of chrome that was not replated, that was left original to the car, is this bumperette that's on the rear, which would give you a pretty good indication of what the car was like uh, prior to its restoration. at least how it spent its time so to speak as a uh, uh, muffler extension here tailpipe extension probably aftermarket but what I'm amazed about is all these front and rear trims with the reflectors and all that kind of stuff are just in spectacular condition he must have found some NOS or these just must have been perfect and had the replating done and took them apart we'll do some video of the trunk here shortly notice how the uh, Put reverse lights in the bumperettes here. Step back, let's take another look. We'll fire it up. It starts right up. It started up cold this morning. When I, when I was here, uh, they had it on the lift, but it had not been started for the day. When we started it, it just fired right up. Has probably two, three thousand miles on it since it was done. Door stays on its catch. Again, all the latches and hardware have been redone. I know I keep saying it's a pretty car. It's an elegant car. Show you the back seat here. This little plastic is a door hedge. This little piece right down there is a little door edge guard that I took off so you can see the edges of the door were good. I'll put it back on. But watch that seat. The whole seat track moves kind of tilts to one side and up so it gives them easier access to the back seat. This red leather is just beautiful and it's definitely leather. You can see the texture on it here. All the dash is restored to a factory style condition. Horn works. We know all the windows work. We put them down. It has a hood release latch, emergency brake, all factory braking on this car. Just turned over to 67,000 actual miles. The dash on these is just spectacular. They stayed, the, when they purchased this car in 06 from the original owner, they stayed in contact with her over the years and actually had a uh, ongoing dialogue where even Christmas cards were exchanged. And uh, it has been verified that the miles are actual. I will say it's probably titled as exempt because that's just atypical. The super trim on the door panels is really neat. I was just looking around here and looking at stuff we're gonna fire it up it's kind of neat you can see the wipers got the wiper washer function here and it's the hood latches here gauge wise clock over on the right side you just turn this to the on position right down here you see that and then all you do on these it's it's activated at the carburetor you just push the gas and it starts 
fuel gauge is working shows about a quarter tank oil pressure gauge is working you can see it going up it's in the high side of the normal range temperature we haven't been running her long enough the amp gauge is working I've got to turn it around so I'll take you for a quick little spin as an optional GM mirror, mirror uh, vanity mirror it also has the antenna up here that you turn and you can it turns the antenna up and down for a little better day and night mirror which was probably optional electronic stereo I know or the radio it's just an AM FM it really doesn't pick up too many channels but go to Jeff at Hot Rod Electric and they'll convert that for you anyway go down and let you hear it run two into one single exhaust sounds great anyway about the time we tell you to get in, make sure you hang on to the end of the video. Give us a phone call. Absolutely never pressure any pressure at all. Have a great day. This is Sweetheart. All right, we're going to take you for a little drive here like we always like to do. Parked in the shade here to kind of give you a different feel and see the quality of the paint and finish on this car is just really nice. Dyna Dynaflow automatic transmission, which is a two-speed. So, But it's not like your later model ones where it have, uh, you know, park reverse neutral drive low it actually it's a reverse scenario it's park neutral so first two are parking positions or neutral and then drive low and reverse but we're gonna go ahead and put it into drive go to reverse you got to go all the way down this thing just runs beautifully we're not taking it for a long drive Excuse me, 67,090 is the odometer reading at the time of inspection. I couldn't see the 9 with the needle where it was. The speedometer is working. <laughs> see it has a Brody knob on it. Makes it actually pretty easy to drive. Well, it's easy with the power steering anyway. It just makes it neat. Anyway, I'm going to take a short little one-two shift up the road here, and then I'm coming back. Great day to take a convertible for a ride. Runs like a kitten. Uh -huh. Hey, this is the kind of car you can drive. Beautiful day. All right, we got the hood up. We're going to share the engine compartment with you. Very nicely done, just like the rest of the car. It's always fun getting underneath the hood. You know I like this part. Uh, tedious restoration on this car, right down to every detail. Uh, all the CAD plated hardware here. We'll get into the engine and stuff. I wanted to do it a little bit in the sun here so you can kind of get a feel rather than being in the shade. Uh, all new cloth wiring in it. You can see it down in here. Firewall was, obviously the car was painted while it was apart. Uh, with the ch color change we talked about in the walk around portion of the video but uh, all new hardware where he could use the old hardware he did uh, these valve covers it has the original valve covers that are included with it but he liked these uh, finned aluminum I've never seen these before fireball v8 uh, finned, and it's got the uh, wire separators here which is really neat I haven't seen those before maybe off marine use um, it's a uh, 322 cubic inch Buick v8 it's the first year of the V8 for the Buick, so uh, which is kind of a neat little thing. They were rated at about 164, 160 horsepower or so. Data tag there, I'll stall there long enough for you to take a look at that. Um, power top motor is down here in this well right down here. That's what some of those wires are for. See the solenoid, it does have power top. Factory uh, GM, uh, six volt uh, I believe. There's a generator right there, fuel pump right there. Again, just really nice and tedious and uh, factory style carburetor. It has the uh, electric start, so when you start this, you turn the key to the on position and it uh, uh, starts the, it engages the starter as soon as you put the gas pedal down. Neat little thing here. You know why guys put a paper or a uh, clothesline clip on one of those fuel lines is the heat sink because they thought it would help them if there was a vapor lock. 
vacuum wipers factory distributor it has the optional dynaflow automatic transmission which is a two two speed automatic you'll see the dynaflow dipstick right here the exhaust down here has a correct crossover on it factory radiator fan shroud factory power steering i'm sure that was probably optional on this big old girl too i couldn't imagine not having it cloth wiring dual horns the horns do work we've tested them get over here on the uh, driver's side same thing on the firewall is just really nice the finish on the firewall is just like the rest of the car um, has a windshield washer bottle here I'm sure it probably works if you put fluid in it but we're not going to put fluid in it and test it uh, again the fireball v8 valve covers first year v8 overhead valve engine really neat uh, it has a rear heater assembly in it too it has the factory power steering that i just mentioned what's i don't know that i've ever seen one of these that still has the battery cover on it this is actually the battery and these covers were often discarded because it comes off fairly easily um, there's the battery cover you can see the fill points i see six cells so it's 12 volt There we go. If I'm wrong about that, I'm sure somebody will correct me. Anyway, I think you get the idea. Appreciate you coming. CAD plated all the hardware here. Hood latch. Have a great day. Make sure you hang on to the end of the video. Give us a call. We're never any pressure. I uh, forgot to show you the bottom side of the hood. Finished just like the exterior of the car. CAD plated the latch up here. One little last peek and uh, hang on to the end of the video. All right, before we put the top down, or we're going to do the photo shoot with the top down, and we're going to take a few shots, but we wanted to share the top with you in video as a video portion of our uh, total video. Anyway, the top's like a soft, a, uh, a Mercedes-style cloth canvas. It's very nice. Black, obviously. Give you a good feel of the top inside and out, top, bottom, before we put it down. See all the bows. Catch you up front here. We'll actually walk around to the other side. What a sweet car. Does have a factory power top. Very nice. That's even without it running. So he's went through and made sure it was right. All right, we get a little video of the trunk here. We kind of laid everything out. Um, very, as we mentioned in the walk around, a very tedious restoration by this gentleman. Um, but also tedious document wise. There are original registrations from when the vehicle way back in the day. Um, history wise, we'll provide more at Spud's Garage. Um, just too hard to cover it all in the video you'll see original owner's manual here um, owner's guide and then he'd buy a reproduction um, same thing this is the original top operating manual but this is a reproduction it has an extra California license plate here with the tab uh, files and files and documents of the restoration we've actually got some pictures of during the restoration also that we'll post at Spud's garage but the mat everything on the trunk is all factory style mats there's the same body color on the deck lid just as nice as the uh, as the uh, out, outside of the car a matching five spoke chrome wheel those weren't stock on this car this is an ad the radial tires with the uh, white walls probably cokers anyway we're thinking you get the idea I am gonna walk right over here right now he has finned aluminum valve covers, which you've already seen in this part of the video, but the original valve covers are included with the car if you decided you wanted to use those. There's also a plate there from where it came from PA. Have a great day. All right, nice enough to have a lift here. This makes it really a lot easier for me and uh, gives you a really good feel of the undercarriage on the car. This is a very solid... Uh, actual mile car that's had every nut and bolt done on it we've talked about that during the walk around but we like to cover everything that we see underneath here uh, absolutely no rust repair here all factory uh, it's a complete body off restoration on it with all new body mounts they've restored everything the rear end um, 
All the shocks in the back have been rebuilt, the hydraulic shocks or knee action shocks, if that's what you want to call them. Uh, the tank looks like a POR 15 refinish on it. So original fuel tank, no rust on the undercarriage and uh, during the restoration, all they found was surface and uh, no perforation and no rust repair was needed at all. We'll show you up in the back here. The lift will only go up so high in the garage here. So I'm gonna kind of be rolling around. You're gonna hear me talking. Fuel door, fuel fill up there. I did notice that the uh, fender skirts are reproduction. Uh, that would be the only thing. It probably didn't come with them and I think finding them would be like final and needle in a haystack. Um, all new hardware on the bumpers, but wherever possible, I can tell this gentleman used original hardware um, during his restoration. Floor pans are rock solid original floor pans with the uh, factory coating and he all he used was a satin black on it. It is a re rear heat, it's got a rear heater in it so we'll cover that with you. All the inner rockers here, I've studied them, inner and outer rockers are all uh, uh, appear to be original. So no repair there. I'm sure this is an original style exhaust, if not the original exhaust based on the miles in the car cleaned up. Um, we're going to have more details and we're going to sort through the file when we get back to Spud's Garage. Um, see over here on this side, same thing, all the drain holes are clear. You look up in here, you'll see all these drains right there are the vents. There's no rust or perforation around them up in the wells here. The chassis itself is rock solid. All new rubber body mounts on it. The engine and transmission were also gone through just like the rear end. We'll get up front here. There's your Dynaflow automatic, the optional automatic transmission on it. Looks like you put a new blower motor or rebuilt the blower motor or all the heater. Here's the rear heater, I believe rear heat on it, convertible. Very nicely done, nice hardware. Good solid car. Up top, you obviously seen that already. It's just absolutely beautiful. All factory front suspension, factory power steering, starters right there. We'll get up into the fender wells here and kind of give you a feel here. You'll see the detail. This car was painted and then assembled. So it was done right. Coil shocks, wishbones, front wishbones here. I'm going to slide this back a little bit and we'll take a spin back. Up in the front bumper area here, you'll see all the brackets have been redone. Really, this car's labor love. Well, we figured we'd take you back. Taking it back to his garage could mostly... Taking it back to their garage could be going home to your garage.